This short tutorial is basically uh, covering material uh, application to very simple low poly objects. So what I have here is a box and just a whole lot of boxes inside it representing a kitchen. Um, it's a very very low poly object uh, or, or collection of objects. Uh, but what I want to do is through material application and um, using photographs actually make it look like a much more sophisticated scene. This is a technique that's used in the gaming business a lot to make scenes look very complex when in actual fact it's just images applied to uh, boxes and planes. But uh, this could be used in uh, things like uh, interior design if you want a quick way of just uh, um, putting together a room and you don't want to go through all the trouble of actually sourcing uh, actual models of things or actually modeling them yourself. So what I have here is just a box representing a fridge, a box representing a microwave, a plane across the front for the cabinets and a top counter and then I have a box representing the room. I also have three spotlights, mental ray uh, area spotlights shining down and um, I've also for some of the objects like the fridge, the room and the microwave I've set up material IDs for the different sides. Um, then in my material editor I've set up materials for those. I've got a room multi-sub object with uh, materials for floor, side walls, back wall and ceiling. I have a fridge multi-sub object with materials for front, sides and top. I have a cabinet front material, a counter material and a microwave sub multi sub object material with front, sides and top. And that's it. So very simple scene. When I switch to my camera view, that's basically the setup and just a simple render shows you that that's what I'm getting. So you know it's simple and the lighting is fine. But what I want to do in this tutorial really is cover how you would now take um, what you need here into Photoshop and actually create the materials you need and apply them. Um, okay so what I've done here is I have taken some photographs of different things in my own kitchen. So there, here we have a picture of just one of the shutters uh, on, on the back wall. I have some tiles, um, I have some little pictures on the wall, I have one cabinet door, um, the front of the fridge, and uh, some vegetable drawers and then the, the granite counter. And notice the way with most of these I haven't taken them flat on. I've kind of deliberately taken them at, at a bit of an angle just to show you how you can straighten out images in Photoshop. So let's do um, the fridge first. So with the fridge first of all I need to straighten this out so that I can use it. So um, in the tools on the side in Photoshop, I'm going to go to the crop tool, hold it down and switch to the perspective crop tool. I'm going to draw a box and then take the corner points of that box and position them at the four corners of the front of this fridge. Now this fridge has a curved front so we're going to have to just kind of crop that a little bit down and then press OK or enter or click on the little check mark uh, up here and there it has actually um, flattened out that front. So that's actually a pretty good result. So I'm just going to save that out into my project file um, into scene assets images and I'll call it fridge front. Okay, the size of the fridge we can deal with um, as just a flat material. So I'm going to switch back to uh, Max and I'm going to select this fridge and just isolate it and just switch to perspective view and uh, I'm going to start applying those materials. So in the material editor here's my fridge and I'll put the fridge on the side here so I can see what's happening. So the front of the fridge I'll double click on that material and in the color channel I will go and I will apply, apply a bitmap. And I will choose that bitmap, uh, which I should have saved into scene assets. It doesn't look like I've. Oh, okay. I didn't press OK here. All right, so now it's saved. Okay, there it is. Okay, 
and I'll say show material. So now I've got a fridge front and I just want to put the sides in as well. So the sides are just going to be a silvery color. So I'll select that and in my Arkin Design presets, I'll go down to metals and I'll just choose, um, I'll choose chrome. Um, same for the top. Okay, so that's my fridge. So uh, if I switch back to my camera view and unhide everything, I've got my little fridge done. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is the uh, marble counter or the granite counter. So here's just a, an image I took of my granite counter. I'm going to crop it down. I'm just using the normal crop tool so I don't get any reflections in that in it. Okay, and then what I need to make sure is that I don't get tiling so that it looks like a continuous surface. So the best way to do that is to go to Filter, Other, Offset. And I'll first offset it on the horizontal, which basically means that it just takes the edges of the image, the left edge and the right edge, and pushes, puts them in the middle so we can see what that join is going to look like. So I'll remember this value of minus 540 because I need to set it back again. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of blur that edge a little bit just using um, the uh, patch tool. So I'm just going to draw, in fact I'll use my rectangular marquee, drag a selection and then use my patch tool just to drag across and then release. So we've got kind of a uh, it's it's not as much of a solid line now. Okay, I'll go back to offset and I'll set it back to okay, well minus 540 is going to work there and then I'll take the vertical and move it down so that we can see that there's that's where the join is and okay and I'll make a selection use the patch tool and just drag that down and heal that over. So now that's not as noticeable as well. There is a little bit of patterning here, but that's okay. It's not gonna, It's not like the camera is going to get really close to this. And that's the thing with um, with this kind of uh, uh, modeling in Max is that you don't want to do this if your camera is going to get really close to something. If your camera is going to get close, you need to model the detail. This is for things that are at a distance and give the impression of 3D objects. Okay, so with the offset, take that back and okay. So now I should have a pretty good um, tile to use on my surf granite surface. So I'm going to save that into my project scene assets images and I'll just call it granite. Okay, I'll switch to max and in my material editor I'll go to my counter and I'll make sure that I'm choosing the uh, gloss finish for them for my Arkin design material and then the map is going to be a bitmap and it will be that granite. And let's, uh, uh, where is it, counter, let's make sure we can see that. Okay, so now I have that. Um, it, it might be a bit chunky. Um, let me just switch to perspective. I don't want to mess my camera view up. So, okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so it's it needs some adjustment here. So I'm going to go into my UVW map, take the gizmo, switch it to scale, and... I'm going to need to scale that. Oh, I'm on, I'm on the wrong object. Okay, I need to be on the counter object and then take the gizmo, scale that so that I have a much tighter surface. Let me just isolate this object so we can see what we're doing. Much tighter grain to it. Okay, and once again, you can see a bit of patterning here, but it's not like the camera's going to get that close to it. Okay, so um, unhide all and switch back to camera view and that's my granite counter done. Okay, so we're going to do the microwave now. So I've taken a photograph of my microwave and you can actually see me in the reflection here. That's not such a good thing, but it's not a serious problem here because we're not going to get too close to it. 
So I just want to straighten this out for the front. So I'm going to use perspective crop tool again, draw a rectangle, pin to the corners. Okay, this is going to need a little bit of cropping. And then OK. All right, so that's going to be the front of the microwave. Okay, so that's going to go into my images folder and I'll just call it microwave. Okay, back to Max and I'll select that microwave object and hide everything else. Switch to perspective and let's go in and change the materials now. Okay, so um, here's my microwave here. Uh, the front, I'm going to choose a gloss finish and material is going to be that image. Let's show it so we can see there it is. And then I'm going to, for the other ones, just choose uh, Chrome again. I'm being a little bit lazy here, but just so that this tutorial doesn't take too long, I'll choose Chrome for sides and Chrome for top. And then I can actually hide the child tree there, collapse that up. Same for the fridge. Um, hide child tree, close that up. Okay, so I've done the fridge, microwave, counter. Okay, those are done. Okay, we're going to do the front of the counters now. So this is um, where I'm actually going to just make a new canvas in Photoshop. And... Um, I'll set it to okay, a width of uh, 3000 pixels and a height of 1000 and then I can just crop it down afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to take uh, okay, the vegetable rack thing will work first. So I'll take my perspective crop tool and the, the same as that I've done before, um, I'm going to crop it down below the counter. And I'll take it to there. Okay. And I'll select that, Command A, go back to my Move tool, and I'll drag that into my new image and drop it. Okay. I'll size that down. So I want that to be sort of somewhere in the middle of my counter. I might need to size it some more just now, but I'll put that there. Okay, so I'm finished with that. I'll close it. And then I have this cabinet door. I'll do the same thing again. And adjust the edges, the corners. Okay, and select all, Command A, Move Tool, drag that in and drop it. Okay, and then size that down. So that will fit there and just tweak that a little bit. I'm going to make it a bit narrower. And then I'm going to start uh, actually building cabinets. So I'll make a duplicate. And then for this one, I will go to Edit, Transform, Flip, Horizontal. Okay, and then just separate those a little bit. And I will take those two layers and alt drag a copy in here okay uh, move my vegetables over a little bit and then I'll take those four again and alt drag a copy to this side okay and <laughs> I just realized my handles are by the floor so I need to flip that over so I'll take all of these and edit um, transform flip vertical. Okay, I know that's going to look a bit weird, but that's fine. I'll live with it. Um, what else do I need to do? I need to take the whole lot and just scale it down a little bit so that it all fits in. Okay. 
and then what I'm going to do is just make a layer right at the bottom I'll just accept that layer right at the bottom and I will just uh, pick up a color from here um, let's use the eyedropper and like dark dark brown maybe this really dark brown and I will fill it fill that layer with that color so foreground color okay all right so we've now got that dark color so now i can crop this properly okay and um okay the color is not really matching that well with the baskets here so i think i'm going to take that layer and just try and do a bit of uh, adjustments with the levels Let's just darken that a little bit. Okay, and I'll take these items and merge them down and do a little bit of hue and saturation adjustment. Let's just get them to be more, more yellow. Okay. darker okay that's not bad all right so I've got the um, the color part of this done so I'm gonna just merge those layers together and I'll just call that um, diffuse which basically means the color part of this and then what I need to do is what I want is where these where the cabinets join in that that's gonna be Kind of like a little indentation like a bump map and also for the baskets here so i'm going to duplicate this layer and i'll just call it uh, bump uh, let's be a little bit more specific counter bump okay and i'm going to desaturate it that means remove all the color from it so image adjustments desaturate and I want to just isolate the parts that I want to keep the bump in. So um, the parts that I don't want the bump, I'm going to select. So, and also this bottom layer, um, I need for the bump map for that to be black. In other words, indented. So I'm going to duplicate that bottom layer and just temporarily put it directly below the bump map and just fill it with black. And then for the bump map, I need to make some selections here. So this, and then add to my selection. And I'm just going to go through, let me zoom in a little bit here. Okay, and I'm going to add to my selection all the way through here. Okay, and here I want the baskets to have bump but the rest of this really is uh, it's kind of a little bit too much to try and expect that to work as a bump so I'm just going to exclude it so around the baskets I'm selecting and also here and across Okay, I'm of course rushing this. If you're doing this, you're going to take more time. Okay, and then let's do cross here. Okay, um, here we'll exclude the doors. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is fill that with white. 
Okay, so what I've got is a bump map that says where it's black, it's going to be indented, and for the baskets, it's going to have kind of an interesting texture. Um, this bump map can also double as a specularity map because what we can do is invert it to say that, uh, sorry, not invert it, keep it as it is to say that where there's uh, where there's cracks between the cabinets, we don't want any shininess to occur. So what I'm going to do is select both of those layers and merge them and call it spec and bump. Okay, now I need to save those out. So this is going to be saved out um, as um, spec and bump and I'll put a counter and as a JPG. Okay, then I'll hide that layer and save this out as counter diffuse jpg and then switch to max and let's select that counter and isolate it or hide everything else and switch to perspective and let's just go in here and let's see how we can set this up so um, Here's the material called cabinet front. So I'll double click on it. And for the color channel, I'll use the bitmap called counter diffuse and say show. Let's just have a look at what that looks like. Okay, I quite like that. It's not bad. And then what we'll do is um, for the um, bump map, we'll apply the spec and bump. And then for the um, reflection map, uh, that's further up here, we'll use the same map, which is the spec and bump. Okay, and then I'll just hide that and pop that down there. So at this stage, it's probably a good idea just to check what, does, what is our render going to look like. So I'll switch back to camera view, unhide everything, and let's just do a quick render. Okay, so, so far so good. Um, I'm happy with that so far. Now we need to move on to the room and we'll tackle the room one uh, side at a time. Okay, so the next part is uh, the room. So I'm going to tackle the ceiling first. So I'm just going to make a new uh, document in Photoshop um, and I'll just make it uh, 3000 by 3000. So it's square. Okay, and um, I will fill that with white. And then I want to create the impression of kind of like a bulkhead in the middle here. So I'm going to create a rectangle in there. And I will set the color of that to an off-white yellow color with no stroke. Uh, let me just tweak that color a bit more. Um, I need it to be much lighter than that. Uh, a little bit on the grayer side. Okay, so we've got kind of a um, bulkhead color coming in the side there. Um, then I want some areas that represent uh, kind of little uh, halogen lights. So I'm going to take the ellipse tool and I'll set it to white and no stroke and I'll drag an ellipse uh, where that needs to go up there and then I'll double click on that uh, oh, sorry and I'll go to my mask settings and I'll feather that quite a bit so it's kind of like looks like light um, kind of reflecting on the roof and I'll alt drag and make a copy to match up basically with those spotlights that I created in Max. And then also I need to make a much tighter spot to represent the actual halogen lamp. So that's going to be a white spot like that. And I'll copy those across as well. Okay, and then around the edges 
where um, I've actually got this white, I want it to um, not be quite as uniform. So what I want to do is just brush in a bit of uh, a bit of darkness. So I'm using my brush tool, and I'm going to use a big brush. Bring my opacity down. I'll pick up the color with my eyedropper of this color here. And then I'm just going to brush in a bit around the edges, just so it's not as kind of machined. Right, and then I'll bring my brush down a bit, and then maybe in the corners make it even a bit darker. Okay, so that's going to be my ceiling. Okay, and I'll save that and call it ceiling. Okay, I'll switch to max and select the room object. Well, I don't really need to select it. I just need to go to my material editor and go to the room multi-sub object and to the um, ceiling item. And I'm going to make sure it's on matte finish and choose that uh, bitmap. Okay, and then make sure that I show it. Okay, it's not that visible here, but I'm just going to do a render just to see what that looks like. I'm going to see if I need to do anything more to it. Okay, so I can see already just by looking at it that um, I need some sort of bump in here. So back in Photoshop, I'm just going to take, so um, this rectangular area is actually going to be out and the outside is going to be in, sort of a, a, like a bulkhead. So I'm going to select that area and make a new layer and that's going to be filled with white. Okay, and then where the, okay that's it, and then I'll make another layer below that and fill that with black. And, oh, okay, wrong thing. Um, let me just undo that. And I need to deselect first before I fill it with black. So fill with black. All right, and then where the actual little um, light things are, these three, that, that, and that. Okay, so these three, um, I'm gonna duplicate. and I will f change those to black. Okay. And, okay, I'm getting a bit messed up with my layers here. Okay, that's worked. And this one also to black. And this one. Okay, so that's my bump map. So I'll save that out as ceiling bump. Okay, and switch back to max. And let's just put that in. So in the material editor, uh, in the ceiling material, we'll go down to bump and we'll put that ceiling bump in. Maybe even just push the bump up to about one. Um, I don't want too much of an extreme uh, look, but let's just see what that looks like. I'll do another render. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, I think the ceiling works quite well. So let's move on to doing the floor. Okay, we're gonna do the floor. So I'm just gonna use one tile and just use it over and over again. So I'm gonna use my perspective crop tool and get the outside of this tile, including the grouting. Okay, whoops. Uh, let's just get that closer. OK, 
Okay, and right now I'm going to crop it down properly. Okay, just to remove that grouting. Okay, and then I'm going to put the grouting back by unlocking this background layer and going to the effects and stroke. And here's the uh, styles panel. I'm going to change the color to dark, dark gray. Say inside, and let's just bring that up a little bit. So we've got some grouting going on around the edge. Okay, you can't see it that well because the gray is the same as here. If I change that to a lighter gray, you'll see it. Uh, uh, let's make it yeah, medium. All right, so that's our tile. Now we need to make a bump map for this. So the bump map is, I'll just duplicate this. And what I'll do with this layer is I'll go to my styles and I'll change the stroke to black, which means it'll be uh, inset. And I'll do a color overlay of white. Okay, so this is going to be the bump map for the tile. I'll save it. Um, JPG and I'll just call it uh, tile bump. Okay, and then this is going to be tile diffuse. Okay, back to Max and let's bring up the, I'll just switch to perspective so that I can move around a bit. And let's switch to the material editor and go into our floor. Um, I'm gonna choose a preset of pearl finish, so it's not kind of gl too glossy. And then for the color, I'm gonna choose that uh, tile diffuse, choose to show it, and then I need to actually go into that material so I need to make sure I can see everything here. Go into that uh, map, sorry, and change the tiling value. Okay, so let's just say 10 by 10. Let's see what that, yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good. Okay, so 10 by 10 is good. Back to the floor material, I'm gonna copy that map, go down to bump and paste it in, and then go there and change the image to the bump image. And I'm gonna repeat that, so go back to floor and I'm gonna copy the bump image and I'm gonna go back up to reflection and paste it in there. Okay, so now I have a floor that should have uh, tiles on it, it should have a bump between the tiles and it also should have um, a bit of glossiness to it. Let's do a test render and see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm just going to stop it there because um, I think that the floor is um, actually too reflective now. So back in the material editor, I'm going to um, remove that reflection map, clear that, and I'll just change the reflectivity down to 0,2 and um, actually, no, I mean, let's make it 0, 0,5. It needs to be reflective. And glossiness, 0, 0,4. Um, but without the reflection map on it. So um, let's see if that improves things. Okay, so the tile's not fantastic, but um, I might come back and just tweak the lighting a little bit later but um, the actual texture is fine it's actually the lighting I think that's a little bit too bright here uh, but we can get to that later um, okay we're going to do the side walls so I'm going to recycle this tile um, so I'm just going to make a new um, uh, yeah, uh, let's say 3000 by 2000 um, and then I'm going to take this tile um, I'm just going to uh, select all and 
move that across. Okay, I think I missed that. Let me try again. Okay, and so we've got one tile in there. I think I didn't bring everything with, so I need to, uh, let me just flatten this down. So I'm just going to convert it to a smart object and then rasterize it. And let's see if that works. I need to try and bring the edges as well. Okay, there we go, that's what I want. So I'm gonna bring that down in size and position that in the corner here. Just make sure it's nicely positioned. Okay, and then drag a copy and merge those. So I'm just gonna press Command E to merge that down. And then another one and Command E, whoops, and then Alt drag another one and one more alt drag okay and then I'll merge all of those and then alt drag up and another one And let's see, let's make one more. Yeah, okay, so that's uh, that's sort of halfway, tiles halfway up the wall. I don't really like the patterning on this, but that's okay. If you took more time, you could actually use a couple of different variations of the tile and rotate them and so on, but we'll live with this. Um, I'll merge all of those down to make our tiles. I'll make a new layer. And I'm going to make the wall color something from these tiles. So I use the eyedropper, pick up that color, and fill it. Foreground color. Okay, so now we've got the wall color above the tiles. And then the last thing I want to do is just make a gradient so that it looks like the bulkhead from the ceiling is throwing light on the wall. So I'm going to make another layer. And I'm going to set my foreground to background color to black and white. Use my gradient tool. And uh, just zoom out a bit. Let me see what that looks like. Okay, wrong way around. I'll just choose reverse. And then I want that. And then I'm going to change the blending mode of that layer to screen. Okay, so what it's actually doing is throwing some light at the top there. And in fact, it will look better if I can make this layer a bit darker. So. Um, let's pick up a slightly darker color from the tiles. I think I need a smaller sample. Okay, and let me just make that color a bit darker. Okay, that's better. And fill. Okay, that's better. So now it looks like there's kind of light coming from the top there. Okay, so, and then we need a bump map. So I'm just going to take the tile layer and duplicate it. Um, and put that at the top. Okay, and I'll just call that bump. And um, I'll make another layer underneath that. And just fill that with white. Okay, and for this one, I'll desaturate it. Uh, image adjustments, desaturate. And that, that actually will do as a bump. So uh, save that out, and I'll call that uh, side wall bump as a JPG. And then I'll hide those top two layers, and this will be side wall diffuse okay let's switch back to max and um, we'll bring up the material editor and we'll go to side walls and 
and let me just get a good view of that and choose that bitmap so it will be sidewall diffuse and make sure that we set it to show um, it might be the other wall okay I should be seeing something here um, sidewalls color are ah, there show sure. okay so there we've got our sidewalls and oh, it's not bad um, don't worry about that kind of chunkiness that will clean up when we do a render um, now I need to apply the bump so I'm going to copy that go down to the bump material paste it in and then click on it and change the image to the bump image that just ensures that the mapping is the same so sidewall bump uh, let's switch back to camera and let's just do a test render of that okay so that's looking all right again we need to just tweak the lighting but we can do that right at the end so the last part is the back wall which is the most complex part so we're moving on to that next okay so this is the last part of the video which is the back wall so I'm going to um, open the um, the wall that we did a moment ago the side wall diffuse and we'll use that as a basis um, I'm going to extend it a little bit um, so I'm going to make or unlock the background layer and make the canvas a bit wider so let's just switch to centimeters and I'll just add 20 centimeters to the width okay and then I'm just going to make a copy and just match those tiles up so we're just extending the wall a little bit there okay then I want to take uh, the shutters that's this here I um, need to flatten those out using the perspective crop okay so just matching up those corners and as well and okay then select all command a move tool and let's just move them into here okay so I'm going to uh, put those somewhere in the middle here um, they probably need to be above the tile line so I'll put them there okay and just make a copy across and flip that horizontally and put that into position okay then I have so that's the shutters done and then I have okay I've finished with the tiles I have these little paintings so I'll take this one and straighten it out select all move tool and move that into here okay and bring that down in size okay I'll just pop that over there and then I'll go back here and just undo a few steps and do the other one okay select all move tool and we'll pop that there and just size it down a little bit okay I think these need shadows so I'll select both of those and uh, merge them and then apply a drop shadow um, and let's just change the size a little bit okay that looks great and then for also for the window uh, shutters I'll merge those 
and I'll just copy the, la the styles from here, copy layer style and paste it to here, paste layer style. So we've got the same sort of shadow around here. Um, as far as a bump map is concerned, you know this wall is going to be quite far away from the camera. So I'm actually not even going to bother with a bump map. I'm just going to leave it as it is. You, If you had the time, you could come in and make a bump map and a reflection map and so on and save it out. I'm just going to save it as an image and put it in the background. So um, save as and I'll just call it uh, back wall diffuse as a JPG. Switch to max and um, material editor and this is going to be uh, back wall and we'll put that map in there and show it and let's see what we've got okay so I mean I know that the shutters look a little bit kind of wonky like they're kind of about to lift off but those are minor things that you would need to tweak but I think we've got the basic idea here so I just want to tweak this main uh, spotlight. So these spotlights are instances. So if I change the one, they'll all change. And what I'm going to do is just take the multiplier down to 0,2. So it's not quite as reflective on the floor. In fact, maybe even 0,15. Okay, and I'll just save that. And let's do one final render. Okay, so that's the final result. It's not perfect uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but it gives you enough information and enough of an idea of how you can take a very low poly model um, in Max and you can, um, you can really kind of uh, give it a lot more detail and make it look a lot more realistic. So this is just a very simple scene, very few polygons, and we've managed to uh, create something that's a lot more real uh, with more time and um, with more uh, effort with photoshopping you can get this to look absolutely 100% real. I hope you found this short tutorial helpful and informative. I will be adding more tips and tricks videos to my YouTube channel regularly so please subscribe and return here every few weeks. Thanks for watching.